All right, hello everyone and welcome to our session for the next hour, having a great discussion uh, really about many, many things, uh, but really specifically focusing on uh, creating this unparalleled student experience. And we have the pleasure of speaking with uh, President Williams of Hampton University. Uh, I'm joined uh, with my, by my colleague, Kim Canning, who's the Vice President of University Partnerships at Kaplan. My name is Petros Manassi. I'm the Senior Director for Pre-Health Programs at Kaplan. And really, the intent of today's conversation is going to be around Hampton's innovative approach to providing these experiences for their students. And so we're looking forward to a great discussion uh, this is a discussion for you, so if you have questions, we highly encourage that you ask them throughout uh, the hour, and we'll get as many of them answered as we can uh, throughout the course of our conversation. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce President Williams and Kim Canning, and really maybe we can start with a quick introduction of everyone, and then we can dive into some questions and some thoughts. Hi, I'm uh, uh, Daryl Williams, uh, president at Hampton University. And I've been here for about uh, about eight months now. Got here in July of last year. Can't tell you how delighted I am to be uh, back at what we call here at Hampton University, affectionately, our home by the sea. <laughs> We're on a peninsula. And uh, you're getting a chance to see a little bit of that in the background. And I, I do that too. Uh, to make everyone jealous, uh, because it is an absolutely gorgeous campus, as Kim found out when she came to visit. Uh, but we're very, very um, uh, honored and happy to be associated with Kaplan and the initiatives that we'll talk about today. We really do think that it is an enhancement to the student experience at our university. So again, very, very happy to be with you today. Uh, I'm Kim Canning, Vice President of University Partnerships. Um, I, uh, myself and my team are the lucky ones that get to um, talk to schools and like Hampton University and um, figure out how we can work together to support students. And so I'm really thrilled to be able to participate in this conversation today with President Williams. Um, looking forward to it. So thank you. So President Williams, one of the strategic goals at Hampton University uh, is delivering the number one student experience in America. So can you share what that means to you, what that means, you know, from, from the perspective of, of your school, what the key initiatives are that are going to, you know, get us, get you there uh, in terms of, in terms of that initiative? Well, you know, you defined it as a strategic goal, but in fact, that is the new vision for the university to deliver the number one student experience in America. And what it really means is uh, that we are a university that is first and foremost focused totally on student success. All else that we do behind the scenes to facilitate that is certainly important. I think everyone knows that a university is, in fact, an enterprise. You know, there's student interest, there's faculty, their staff, there's alumni, their business partners, their community leaders, you name it. But at the end of the day, they all exist to support one goal, and that is to support our student success. And so we wanted to uh, develop a vision that acknowledged that in a very, very simple way, one that everyone can understand and see how they fit into it. And so it's not very difficult for a faculty member to understand how they fit into delivering the number one student experience in America. Equally so, it's not difficult for the person who works in the cafeteria or the, the groundskeeper or someone else within the organization to understand very simply, you know, how we provide that. Well, at the very top, of the list of things that will lead us to that experience is academic excellence. Uh, we do in fact have six goals under that vision and academic excellence is right at the top. And so this whole uh, Kaplan proposal for us is a way of fortifying that academic excellence. We all know that our students have to take a number of these exams either before they graduate or shortly afterwards. And this was one of our commitments or one of our down payments on that uh, overall student experience. Wonderful. 
and maybe Kim, you can elaborate on the on the Kaplan uh, side of this, the the all access piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what President Williams is referring to is our all access initiative. Um, and so, you know, to the point around exams or license test prep exams to go to professional or graduate school, license exams, students can either see these as opportunities or barriers. And so a gateway or a barrier. And so really the idea behind all access is that um, where students either are able to pay for the resources on their own or not able to, um, that this becomes part of what the university is providing so that there is kind of an equity in terms of access to those resources that we know can really propel students to the next level. So, um, you know, shoring up those pipelines to medical school, law school, graduate school, um, you know, helping, helping to define those paths, helping to pull, push those students down those pathways, which the more students are in, in, in those pipelines, the more students we can help to matriculate into graduate and professional schools. Um, so that's the idea that when we started talking to Hampton, you know, we had a history with Hampton um, over the years uh, and honestly had several conversations over the past five or six years about how we could expand. And I think, you know, when we started, when um, President Williams heard about all access and, and the concept that was where it fit into, I think, I don't want to speak for you, President Williams, but it clearly fit into this idea of academic success and um, propelling students um, forward in, in that um, place. And, and uh, I will plus one the notion that these exams really do show the opportunity, right, that's available. And so a student wants to go into med school, they want to go into law school, they're, you know, we sometimes or many times these exams are seen as those barriers, but really it's here's your potential, right? Here's here's the next step. And so they do open doors to lots of things, including scholarships sometimes uh, for students as they as they progress through their their higher education. Um, in, in the conversations for all access, I, I know that there was a lot of collaboration that had to happen, right? In terms of, and President Williams, this is you know a little more for you, in terms of collaboration among your university leadership, can you share your approach for, you know, to the collaboration on, on how you were able to secure it amongst um, university leadership on, on these new initiatives as you're kind of putting together this, you know, this plan uh, to incorporate the Kaplan uh, prep resources into, into your mission, into your vision. I think you've touched on one of the real uh, important aspects of execution of this entire Kaplan proposal. Uh, we thought it was very important right up front to get all of our uh, faculty involved right away to see what tests is it that, that students uh, want to have access to the other aspect of it was talking to students themselves. You know, which tests do you want to take? We also sort of did an informal survey, if you will, of the amount of money that our students are, are spending on, on test preparation. And so I felt like we did a, uh, a broad base cross-section of interests and equities surrounding what our approach really needed to be. And that is then how we defined uh, the exact tests that we wanted to be able to provide for our students. And so I'm happy to say that, you know, we started the program in the January timeframe and in very short order, you know, by my numbers, uh, Kim probably has the same one, about 244 students are involved in the program, the largest programs being, you know, the MCAT and the LSAT. And of course, you always get large numbers in the, in the GRE, but we're also doing the, you know, we're doing the NCLEX, we're doing the Praxis. Um, and so we think those numbers for being essentially a month and a half into the program are pretty darn significant. And right now it's sort of evenly split between 
uh, those who prefer to take it in person, as well as those who want to take it uh, virtually, depending upon their schedules. That was another aspect of this, you know, synchronization, if you will, and uh, looking across the entire staff. We had to ask students what their preferences were. And based upon those preferences, we selected uh, a combination of the online option as well as the in-person option to give our students maximum flexibility. And so we're again, so happy that we can do this to lower the total cost of attendance for our students. I mean, one of the things that we were finding was that, you know, shortly after graduation, many of our students had to take this test. We, like so many schools, have lots of students of need and it takes everything they have to pay their bill and to graduate. And then as soon as you graduate, you're looking at a preparatory exam that could cost anywhere between three and $6,000. And the question is, you know, where do I get that from? We also found in talking to our students and our faculty and others that some would take it sooner if it was free. You know, the focus during that second semester is certainly graduation, but some would take those tests earlier if they could so that they would qualify for graduate school and medical school and law school and so forth. So all of that collection of information was really, really important to the option that we ultimately selected. And I can't tell you how many thank yous I've gotten from students surrounding you know, the university's acceptance of the responsibility to pay for those programs. And I'll give you a small anecdote and then I'll, uh, I'll relinquish the microphone. So just two nights ago, I had a president's town hall with our students. And we talked about several initiatives that we have undertaken this past year. And to make a long story short, when we talked about this new Kaplan uh, initiative, we got among the loudest uh, responses and claps and, and thanks for the university doing a great job. So it's been very successful, but it was definitely facilitated uh, by a lot of gathering and collection of information and making sure that all of the right people were involved. So I, think, oh. Petros, I think that's a really good lead into one of the questions that we've had so far, yeah. which is, do you okay. have advice on how to get key departments on campus on board for a student-centered and student success focused approach. We like to say, and say is capitalized, we are here for the students first, but actions do not always prove this to be true. It seems to me, and um, it seems to me in our multiple conversations, President Williams, exactly what you were saying that the amount of effort you and your team put into asking questions about what students need and really listening to the responses, that that's an, an important piece of this. And um, I think what's the end result was this kind of launch of, and you could probably say this about other initiatives you have as well, but this launch of students that were primed and ready because you had been asking the right questions and then thoughtfully listening you know to to what the students need and want i mean you're you're exactly right well how do you provide the number one student experience in america without listening to your students and so to that end back in october we also did a student survey from the first of october to the 23rd of october we broke it into two surveys one was strictly for freshmen they'd only been on campus for a month and a half and then the second one was for continuing students. And then from that survey, we developed a list of items that we needed to address. One of the items that uh, came up as part of the survey was the inordinate amount of money that students spend to, to prepare themselves. And so born out of that idea was this particular interest in making sure that our students would be as prepared as they possibly you know, could be. The other thing that factored into that uh, decision for us was not, you know, uh, one, once you establish a relationship with the students where they understand that when they fill out a survey or when they address a concern to the administration, that you're actually going to take action on it. 
it has benefits well beyond the Kaplan program. And anytime you can demonstrate your care and concern for what happens with our students and it affects the bottom line, the total cost of attendance, then that's making a real difference in someone's life. And that's the kind of feedback that I've been getting about the program. And right now it's, you know, it's all thumbs up. And we are very, very hopeful that this will in fact lead to better performance by our students on all of the national exams. Some, as you all know, will go for the most inexpensive, but perhaps not as complete option of test preparation that they can get. Not because they don't want to, but simply because they can't afford it. And so we think by offering them high quality instruction that they don't have to pay for, we think uh, we are going to have a better pass rate for our students on all of the national exams. Absolutely wonderful. The, uh, the, there, there was a, another question kind of in line with what we we're talking about here in terms of these resources being available. And, and, I, and it sounds like we've touched upon this already, but the question was, how will you assess and measure the student utilization, right? So in terms of how students are actually, I mean, they're signing up for it, but how, are, how do we know that they're using the materials, they're pursuing the path forward, applying eventually to med school? as we go forward. I mean, so on the front end, and we're being as intentional as we possibly can. So for the online courses, um, my understanding is Kaplan will be able to give us uh, some metrics on how many students actually attend, maybe not name by name, but you know how many are attending. Uh, number two, on the um, courses of instruction that are in person, we're actually taking attendance. And so I have, I've asked, and again, this is not to go back and, and uh, reprimand students that don't. We too, like you, want to uh, make sure that it is in fact being a benefit and whether or not we need to make adjustments in time within the schedule. But that too will give us an idea about how many of our students are in fact um, using that service. Uh, then uh, one of the things that we will do is we will likely begin a postgraduate survey. And we'll ask the students that in fact signed up uh, for the course, whether or not, um, you know, whether or not they found it helpful. And then ultimately, we certainly would like to know whether or not they passed. As you know, that part is rather imprecise, yeah. depending upon people to self-report is not, you know, the most accurate way to do it. But uh, as of right now, in the early stages of the program, there is a great deal of excitement around uh, this test preparation and students are very, very grateful. If, if I could pivot for just a moment to an aspect of this that we will begin to adopt and implement next year, it's this whole module on critical thinking. Mm -hmm. And so the, uh, the ones that we've been talking about thus far are, uh, you know, are designed to assist students with postgraduate and professional schooling. But the module on critical thinking, we believe, applies to every student at Hampton University. Mm -hmm. And so we've been talking about how we want to implement that the critical thinking component will help students in every academic endeavor. Mm -hmm. And if they complete it, and if they even want to take it again every year, uh, we would certainly welcome that approach. Critical thinking applies to, as we all know, everything. So it's our hope that starting next fall, one, we will find a way to put it into all of our freshmen, make it a part of our freshman uh, orientation and certainly not orientation among the required courses freshman year. And then at a minimum, we think for our continuing students, you know, it will be, uh, you know, an elective but we think so highly of the critical thinking course that we believe is something that students, uh, I know this is a double, maybe a triple a negative, but they can't afford not to do. And uh, I, will, I, will, I will plus one or plus negative, your, your, your triple negative there. It's you know, critical thinking is, is so, it's so broad scope, right? In terms of all of education. Uh, and, and it's so oftentimes overlooked, especially when you, 
have students who are taking classes in the sciences. They're just trying to memorize formulas. They don't realize that there's this critical thinking aspect of actually how to apply the formula when you're looking at logic or philosophy. I mean, all, all subjects. So I think it's absolutely wonderful. I know that was one of the things we wanted to definitely touch upon. I think it's absolutely wonderful that that is going to be part of this ongoing process. So then it leads up yep. to the test preparation for these exams, which guess what? All have critical thinking in them or the job that a student's going to have after graduation that's going to have critical thinking in it. Uh, so it's really a life skill and a, and a, and a full career skill as it, as it moves forward. Um, just, yeah, just to give sorry. a little bit more context, Please. because yes. the critical, yeah. our critical thinking course is not something um, that we have, that you've been able to go on, a student can go on our website and buy as of right now. Um, we really, the genesis of the critical thinking course was in work that we have done with pipeline programs, in understanding that students might need to come to test before they take test prep, have a little bit more um, skill building around critical thinking. And so there have been programs that we have provided critical thinking more around the cars. It's, it was more developed around the cars part of MCAT. In the past couple of years, we, um, we made some changes to that course to make it test agnostic and so that it really can do double duty right because when you think about standardized tests the basis for standardized testing is critical thinking pretty much across the board so students will obviously have that leg up when it comes to starting their test prep and then ultimately taking a test but as you pointed out it also then helps in life in you know persisting and and finishing and graduating from Hampton um you know as you go on into the workforce or go you know continue to extend your education it's really this basis and we've heard um from numerous advisors and partners over the years that this this is a real identifiable need for students and i personally was just thrilled when um, you know, when we brought this up in conversation with Dr. Williams and his team, and they really identified that that providing this resource, as he talked about, to freshmen, continuing students, that um, this was going to be a priority for them, which I think is is really tremendous. So. Absolutely. Absolutely tremendous. The um, there, there have been a couple of questions that have come in through the chat, which are, I want to make sure that we get them answered. It's a little bit of a pivot from critical thinking, but, <laughs> but let's do the pivot because, because it's it's a common theme here. Um, and that's around the financial implications uh, to, you know, and, and also because these questions are somewhat similar, I'm going to kind of summarize um, and, and, and merge them together. But really the basis is what is the financial implication? Is this a cost that's being absorbed by the university and and how did you get the buy-in for the additional i mean for the cost well the uh the short answer is yes the uh, university is absorbing this cost and is not being passed on to the student in the way of additional fees um, look i i thought that it was important enough to invest in our in our students uh, as i got our budget amended just a few weeks ago with our board of trustees. Uh, this was an item that was not in the budget at the beginning of the academic year. You know, those budgets typically, at least at our school, will get approved the previous year. But it was such a powerful program and so important that uh, I took it um, on faith that we would be able to find the dollars to, to resource it. And certainly we did. And this, among other things, we're able to adjust within our current year's budget. So you can't do that too often. You only want to do it for things that truly are impactful. But I really wanted to get to a point where I wasn't talking about impacting your student experience next year or the year after. We wanted to do something that began to impact our student experience right now. And this was one of those initiatives. And so I'm happy to say that our seniors at the university in particular have definitely embraced the program, although it's not a program just for seniors. They are 
the primary beneficiaries and of those 244 that I talked about, uh, I would imagine if we did a breakdown, the vast majority are those that are uh, looking at matriculating out of the university this year. This will help those students right now. And if I added up the collective cost of what those students would have to pay for these exams that they would be taking, I'm almost certain it would be in the several hundreds of uh, thousands of dollars. And so uh, we chose to absorb it and not to pass it on uh, to the student. Um, it was, in fact, one of the criteria by which we defined whether or not we would accept the program or do it. We would have to find the dollars internally to do it and not pass it on as a hidden cost to students and our parents. And so we found a way to, to absorb it into our current budget. budget. And, we're, and we're really, really happy we did. That's wonderful. Is there um, is there another question that came through? Is there is there a time frame as far as students utilizing the program? I mean, is it open only to current students or recent alumni? Like how? Yeah, it's only open to students that are currently assigned to the university, um, and we'd like to we'd like to keep it that way. I will say that we believe that it is a recruitment incentive, and so we're finding, for example. We're in the middle of uh, recruitment season. A lot of students will be making their, uh, their college choices out of high school over the next uh, month to two months or so. And we have certainly encouraged our recruiters and, and uh, everyone interfacing with students to come to the university to talk about this added benefit. And we really do believe it is. And so, while it, you know, it's, it's hard to count those dollars, it does add to a student's cost of attendance. And so although that may not be until three or four years from now when you legitimately have to, you can add that right on to the student's cost of attending college. That's an item that we think, along with some others, that we've taken off the table. Now, is that going to, in and of itself, have one student choose, you know, Hampton University or some over some other school. No, I don't think so. But what it does signal is a commitment by the university to doing everything that it can to provide that student experience and to lower costs as best we can to our students without passing those costs on. So that's actually a good segue into what a question that came in a couple minutes ago. It appears that Hampton's graduation rate is 59%. Do you expect that this initiative will impact on increasing this rate? Um, I mean, it sounds like that's hopefully one of the goals here that that you've laid out for this program. Well, we certainly hope so, but you know, I, I would I think it would be disingenuous to to think that this initiative alone is going to improve Hampton's graduation rate. I think this in combination with a number of other initiatives we believe will help that. So uh, so anytime, for example, you can in increase uh, scholarship monies that are available to students, the propensity for them to persist and complete their college experience is uh, is certainly much, much higher. Um, we think that our continued involvement uh, which our students on Hampton, which we've always had, you know, a very, very close relationship with their professors, their overall social experience at the university. We think the whole mental health aspect of being at a university is becoming much, much more critical to students persisting and eventually graduating. And so it's our attention to all of these things that we think will improve our graduation rate. But in my way of thinking, this really is uh, a vital component. Well, and to see, I think to your point around being able to see an impact right away, that students can feel that whether they're one of the 244 students or their friends are one of the 200 or the freshmen see the juniors and seniors taking it, it's it's an impact that can spread out and, and um, and drive a different mentality. I, I will say one conversation that I've had with um, our partner at Cleveland State University, Brittany Wamper, is that we don't think test prep is the be all end all 
solution. We are hopefully a piece of the puzzle. And I think what's coming out in this conversation is all the puzzle pieces that you're putting together to make for this extraordinary student experience, um, but that, and that this can help drive that, but it's not the solution, right? And and we're, we, we're really clear about that for sure. We want to be a piece of the solution and we want to help where we can. And it works that, it can be that much more impactful when there is this type of plan, this type of initiative, you know, these different initiatives going on, so. I, I mean, I think you make a great, a great point, um, you know, following on the point that I made about all of the other things. I think uh, for anyone in the listening audience, if this is all you're doing, um, you probably won't get the success that you're looking for. But I think taking a more comprehensive approach in which this is a key part, that I do think you have a great opportunity to um, to improve graduation rates and to improve the student experience at the university. You know, I mentioned mental health. That's not to be taken lightly. You know, what I what I find is that when you look at our seniors, for example, who are on the one hand dealing with the pressures of getting ready to graduate. You know, you've been here for, you know, hopefully three and a half years. And the reality that the college experience is about to end and you are getting ready to enter the the real world is uh is 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 pressure. You add that on top of the what's next. And so for many, it's finding a job in the, uh, in the job market. And for still others, it's having to pass those uh, professional certification exams. And then for others, it's having to pass one of these exams to fulfill your dream of becoming a doctor or a lawyer or a nurse or a pharmacist. And all of this happens uh, to a large degree between the month of January and May, and many will take their examinations, as you know, in June or, or July. That added to the pressure of being uh, of finishing out your coursework in good standing and walking across that stage so that you don't disappoint yourself or mom and dad who have, uh, you know, who have um, uh, sacrificed so much to get you there. And then there's this pressure of coming up with enough funding to pay for your exam. And so there's so much packed into that one period of time. We just think that taking this off the table from a mental health perspective is one less thing that our students have to worry about and and, and allows them hopefully to help enjoy that last semester a little bit more. You mentioned, um, I mean, obviously we've been talking a little about the financials impact for the student. So does Hampton also provide for the registration fees for the tests themselves? Because the, So there was a question around whether the all access program that the student pays for the students actually take the test. So the all access program is of course the test preparation what about the actual testing fees? Because those can be hundreds of dollars just on their own uh, as well. Uh, I have to be honest and say, I don't know the answer to that question. I probably should, but I don't know the answer to that question. And if the answer is no, it's certainly something that I will take, um, take a hard look at. Again, for me, in terms of uh, delivering that number one student experience, I want to take as many of those items off the student's table as we possibly can. I'll give you another couple of examples. They're you know, far less expensive, but they follow the same theme. And so when our students got ready to go home for Thanksgiving, and then again for Christmas, we passed out four $25 gas cards, 400, I'm sorry, $25 gas cards to students who were driving home. Why? We wanted to take away the stress of students not knowing whether or not they actually had enough money to drive from Hampton to New Jersey or to Pennsylvania or to uh, North Carolina or, or somewhere else nearby. And then we did the same thing again for, uh, for the Christmas holiday break. Now, $25 in and of itself 
is not a lot of money. But when you combine uh, initiatives such as that with, we're also doing everything we can to bring you things like your uh, national certification exams for free, it begins to paint a picture about that number one student experience. Mm -hmm. And then something else we're you know, very, very proud of. We've started doing something in the way of financial literacy at the university and there are two programs. So for all of our freshmen that came in this year, we partnered with a company called, an investment company called Stackwell. And we placed and opened $25 into an investment account for every freshman at Hampton University. Oh, wow. And for their next four years at the university, they will own and manage, along with their parents, their own investment account. And so over the next four years, when our freshman classes come in, we will have every student on Hampton University with an investment account. So that's initiative one. Number two is that we partnered with an organization called the Society for Financial Education and Professional Development to offer an online, at your own pace, 10-hour financial literacy course to go over things like credit card debt and school loans and mortgage payments and why it may be better to buy a used car than a new car. And so pairing the financial literacy education with the practical application of having your own investment account is another way at Hampton University that we are investing in our students. And so again, when you tie that initiative together with simple things like providing gas cards, with now uh, providing free access to these national certification exams, it really does paint the picture about where we're headed with providing the number one student experience in America. Now, those, 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 those are great anecdotes. I mean, that are, yeah. you know, and, and really, I mean, it's, it's yeah. not test prep, but it's it's the little things sometimes like that. It's the little things, yeah. Yeah, and I love and, it. And also financial literacy, investment, learning how to invest, those are not small things. No. Those no. are yeah. those are things that I personally struggled with when I graduated <laughs> from college and wish that I'd had. Yeah. I mean, those are real issues that yeah. we hear about. And I and I that's really impressive. Um I, I love the and, idea and, of having and the, and the kicker is when you finish the financial literacy course you actually get a financial literacy certificate that you can place on your resume. And so our, our, my anecdote is, uh, you know, when a student graduates and walks across the stage, they'll have their diploma in one hand, they have the financial literacy certificate in the other hand, and hopefully up to four years of investing, a teeth full of dollars. <laughs> and now that we're partnered with, with uh, Kaplan, I have to add one more. Yeah. that they will have passed their, their their national exam and they got it for free. Yeah, yeah. Don't you want to come to Hampton University? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have three kids. I'm looking for a place. <laughs> uh, but just to follow up, and we yeah. have some time to expand on this a little bit. One of the questions says, is um, from a technology perspective, what systems or services, and you just talked about a couple of them, but if there are, other from a technology point of view, have you implemented to help your students, both those starting their academic career and those nearing graduation? So again, maybe from a more technology perspective, or if there are other support services that you are, you know, working on putting in place now? Yeah, so a couple. So first of all, I'm happy to say that in order to implement the Kaplan program, uh, we were not driven to have to make any additional technology investment. And so just, you know, tip of the hat to your program, it really is, I think, ag agnostic to, um, to the systems that you already have in place. And if they work well before Kaplan, they should work well when you have the Kaplan program. I think everyone understands that the whole uh, demand on the technology space and on your broadband infrastructure at universities is an area of critical need. Hampton is certainly no uh, exception. So one of the things that we did unrelated to this, but we're glad that we did was we had two um, uh, pretty well-known information technology companies come in and do an assessment 
of our broadband infrastructure and just around the whole idea of how do you get to you know, 5G in five years. And uh, it certainly revealed some very, very interesting things to us. And so from a technology uh, capability and infrastructure perspective, we ended up uh, certainly having to uh, allocate some money to changing out all of the fiber optic cable uh, at the university, uh, putting in new firewalls and, and the like to you know, fairly uh, well upgrade um, all of our systems here at the university. But, but none of that was necessarily a result of bringing uh, the Kaplan program on board. We're also looking at the future of the university in terms of technology. And uh, clearly the advent of looking at things like artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning and the like, we are also making additional investments that will allow us to optimize the use of, of those capabilities. We're also looking into things like uh, the learning that comes out of the whole uh, new in initiative around the, the, meta the metaverse and augmented reality and so many other areas of technology that are impacting both the student social experience, but more importantly, you know, the academic experience and then more broadly, our research experience. We are a, a very good research institution and technology is assisting us in those spaces as well. So I think to answer your question, yes, uh, we have had to take a complete relook of the entire technology space, but it was not a, as a result of taking on the Kaplan program. Um, so we have, I think you have a fan, um, President Williams. Uh, the, the uh, that's, I, I paid that person, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That, you see, that's, that's good. As a college counselor at a private independent high school, how do we invite a speaker from Hampton to present on maintaining and creating a relevant community of learners? Talk about this program and other programs to establish academic excellence. So um, I, I'm sure well, they just, can reach out to you, right? Or reach yeah, out they to can. You. Uh, and so the, uh, the phone number to my office, uh, my, all, all you really have to do is go on the website and look up Office of the President uh, and they'll patch you, you know, right into my front office. And, uh, you know, my executive assistant will be more than, more than happy to help. And I really do mean that, um, you know, we are, we are in the business of not just keeping the goodness of Hampton University to Hampton. And the reality is that everything that we're doing, uh, the, all of the ideas did not originate here. We're getting these ideas from others as well. And so we're more than happy to pass those along and share what it is that we're doing well and what we can adopt from others. Uh, so we welcome the opportunity to uh, collaborate with others. I really like the, the statement of a community of learners. I, that's, um, I think that's what you're really intentionally focused on, which is really impressive. I agree with you. Um, uh, we're, we're also finding that um, obviously the higher education landscape is, is, uh, is changing and at a very rapid rate. One of the more important experiences that I have in around a month is I'm a part of a couple of uh, online conversations with other college presidents, for example, from different areas. And these are the kinds of issues that we talk about. And so I am personally involved in several different communities of, of uh, uh, learners. I have one with, you know, with other college presidents who I learn a great deal from. And we'll spend an hour just talking about something like the Kaplan proposal and what it means or talk about fundraising or enrollment or any number of, of critical areas. And then I'm in another uh, community of learners around other historically black college and university presidents. I'm in another community of learners surrounding uh, what's happening within the business community within this area. And I find that these various communities all become stakeholders 
in uh, my ability to bring the very best to Hampton University. And so I don't think you ever stop learning and you ever stop bringing new ideas to the table. But uh, again, to, to bring it back to this conversation, this idea around Kaplan and what we're doing was um, uh, certainly one of the most impactful things that we've done at the university this year. And I think it will only improve or accelerate as, for example, we uh, more students get to know about it next year, get to sign up for it, know about it in a much more intentional way, start taking the critical thinking courses. I really think this has the opportunity to, to explode. Not, not to move us away from the test prep, but there was a question specifically around engagement and your strategies and thoughts on engagement, especially coming out of the pandemic where as the question states, students are a little less engaged in student life. And it sounds like from, you know, from what our discussion has been, there is a continued community of engagement at Hampton. And especially with the, you know, the uptick in terms of, or the adoption in terms of students uh, wanting to utilize the, the, the Kaplan programs. Thoughts on, on that? Yeah, like, achieve, it's, like, it's a great that? question. And I want to thank, you know, whoever it was that brought it up. So I, re I remind uh, uh, listeners as well that, so a lot of the students that are in the test prep phase right now, those that are either in the in-person or the online, are the same students who went through a big portion of their college experience in the COVID virtual learning environment. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we found that this year was the first year at Hampton University where we are completely and totally fully back to school with sort of thoughts of COVID, not in the rear view mirror, but well in the side view mirror and not impacting operations at the university. We're finding that our students love being back in the fully open environment and able to engage in a way that perhaps they were not able to do so uh, previously without those concerns. And so all of the large uh, gatherings where you used to have to think COVID first, we're still thinking about it, but it doesn't dominate the thoughts surrounding having the event. So I think one of the reasons why we're having such a positive response to the in-person piece is that I think our students still understand the value of being in the same room with the instructor. And I think they still enjoy the interaction. I would also say that this fits very, very naturally with the overall Hampton University in particular experience. So we've always prided ourselves on being a university that was big on the interpersonal experience. As I indicated earlier, and as you see in my background, we're on a peninsula. And so we have always had a very tight community. Mm -hmm. And so I think the Kaplan in-person program for testing really caters more to the values of Hampton University than in some cases the online thing does. But again, to answer your question, um, I think our students are enjoying this experience, I think it gives them all of the flexibility and variety they need, but ultimately, I think we do like the engagement that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Are there, if there are other questions, we're coming up on time, so I want to make sure to make a one final announcement for questions if folks have them uh, to type them in so that we can get them get them answered before we uh, before we wrap up here. The um, there was a question came in a little earlier, but I think now is the appropriate time to ask it. Um, you know, are there set goals in terms of score improvement that you've placed for students who are utilizing the program, or is it really more we want you to do better, or you know, even more so, just be prepared for these exams uh, so that you get the strong score to eventually be the stronger applicant. Uh, or you know, if it's a licensing exam, to pass the licensing exam. 
I think it's very difficult to pursue individual goals uh, for a program like this. It really is specific to the individuals. You know, what I want to provide for our students more than anything else is really access. Okay. Yeah. I'm very, very uh, confident that given access, uh, our students will do the very, very best that they can do. And it's not about, uh, you know, their comparison to another student. It's about giving students to be the very best that they possibly can be. In my view, the fact that students are signing up for the tests is an acknowledgement that our students want to be successful. And at Hampton, our students, many of them are so uh, mission driven that I think given access to these resources, they're naturally going to do uh, the best that they, they, they can. You know, our school, again, I think has a, uh, has a history and a legacy of producing outstanding graduates. We like to provide what we call an education for life. And then a part of our alma mater talks about students leaving this great university and allowing their lives to do the singing. You know, we're a national university that you'll find Hamptonians in every city in the United States and parts of the world. And so there is this expectation that you will do your very best. We're merely trying to provide the tools mm -hmm. that allow our students to do that. And so as president, I really don't feel a need to try and track mm -hmm. the test scores of our of our students. We merely want to provide access for them to be the best they can be. And that, and that is, um, I mean, to see that and how it yeah. fits into the, the mission, the philosophy, the spirit yeah. of the school is, I think, absolutely phenomenal. And, you know, quite frankly, um, from a historical perspective, also very much in line with uh, with the mission that, that Kaplan started at, you know, Stanley Kaplan back in the 1930s started preparing students for tests to create more access, right, to create more opportunities uh, and really to, uh, to to expand those opportunities. So it's, I think that, that the notion of providing the access and then do what you will with it, right, do, you know, make, do, do good with it is, uh, is really the, uh, is, is really a great, great well, it's, em you're, it's empowering students. You're exactly. Yeah. You're giving them access to the resources, and you have faith in them, mm -hmm. um, and are and you have faith in them to succeed. And I think that's there's yeah. a lot to be said about that. So you know, you uh, you gave me another idea uh, about this as as we were sitting here, and that was you know I told you last year uh, as part of my assessment as a new president, I did a student survey. And what I committed to was doing another survey this time, the same time next year, to see how much improvement we've made. I mean, normally you would only do a survey maybe every two years, but I want to make sure that we're undergoing rapid improvement. So for this first turn only, I'm going to do it next, next year as well. Uh, one of the things that I will include in there now that I think about it is I'm going to include a specific mention of the Kaplan program and whether or not students have found it helpful, and if there's anything else that we can do. And so to your question around how do you measure success uh, next year, then probably every two years after that, I'm going to ask to get some directed feedback on the impact that the Kaplan program is having. So, so thanks for that idea, even though you didn't know you gave it to me. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think it's not surprising in listening to you talk about where Hampton is going and what students can expect, uh, you know, from a leadership perspective, listening, um, being inclusive, the way, I mean, I've sat in several meetings with you and your senior leadership and, and um you know, at the end of the day, I, I think it's very clear that President Williams is in charge, but at the also at the end of the day, it's a very inclusive conversation that's clearly, you know, you're listening, everybody's listening to each other. Um, it's just, uh, it's not unexpected that this is your, these are your outcomes and that 
and the way you're describing your goals for Hampton and Hampton students, um, there's a lot of clarity around that. And I, I think, you know, in a lot of these questions around um, that we had about setting goals or, you know, how do you engage students or how do you, like, there's a clear, a really clear plan here. I'm really grateful that, you know, we were able to connect at the time that we could and, and that Kaplan could become a piece of your puzzle. Um, but it's, it's really clear about where you're leading. So that's really impressive. We are coming up on the end of our time together. So I wanted to take this opportunity to give the two of you an opportunity to kind of summarize your thoughts and any final final words uh, for everybody who's listening. And also to, to thank Inside Higher Ed for facilitating uh, this conversation here today. So Petros, before we do that, um, we've had a question, President Williams, what was the name of the company with the oh, financial yes, literacy series? I, I'm, I'm assuming that's gonna be a bit, they're gonna be getting a lot of phone calls. The, for the financial literacy certificate? Yeah. It's uh, SFEPD, and it stands for Society for Financial Education and Professional Development. Society okay. for Financial Education and Professional Development, SFEPD. Perfect. So I'll wrap up with, with, yeah. with my final comment. Yeah, you, you're, it's your uh, yours. And so again, so again, first of all, thank you for Inside Higher Ed uh, facilitating this uh, discussion around Kaplan. I do think that this is a, a critical initiative. And even if uh, I were not enamored with this idea of and driving towards our vision of a uh, providing the number one student experience in, in America. I would still think that this is a very, very important program. Again, at a university where we have, not like most other universities, lots of students of need, I think it is important that we find ways to relieve the burden on our students and their families uh, if, it, it is at all, if it's at all possible to absorb those um, cost drivers uh, out of their college experience. And I think more and more, we're gonna have to find a way to, to do so. And so sometimes it's not about, you know, reducing necessarily the, uh, the tuition and fees, although that's certainly the objective. We wanna make education affordable to all. There are some lesser things that you can do, such as this that have a major impact. Second of all, I would say this idea of supplementing the formal education of our students and finding other ways to assist students in growing. I think this sort of, uh, this, this Kaplan program is important in that regard as well. And so it is, and I think will be, uh, well into the future, an important program at Hampton, one I look forward to expanding and seeing uh, the fruits of, and I look forward to the feedback that I would send, that I get from students when they get accepted into law school and graduate school and medical school and pass their pharmacy and nursing exams. I look into the big smiles. I look forward to them uh, as our students take full advantage of this great program. So again, thank you, and I appreciate having been a panel member. Thank you, President Williams, and uh, thank you to all for joining us today. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you.